Okay, another part of uh, my vlogging experience. So I'm making this recording first time, and I now I hear some uh, some machines in the background. Anyway, pro you will probably not hear it. Hopefully. Anyway, uh, it will be last time when I'm doing this um, this video. Uh, there's plenty of people around me and I hope that there will be quiet moments for making it properly. But anyway, we have to deal with reality as it is. So, exciting day in London for me because I'm going to see Francis Bacon exhibition uh, at Royal Academy, uh, Man and Beast. Uh, so, those there the are paintings uh, on which, like uh, Francis Bacon, like depicted some animals, and he was like fascinated by animals because the, they had no inhibition and like this pure instinct, uh, let's say, and animalistic aspect of their nature he, uh, was fascinating for him. Anyway, uh, he saw people in the same manner, so he just saw people as animals. And this is simply naturalistic view of human existence. So uh, he was realist and he was completely disillusioned and it's beautiful uh, so let me tell you a story how i like discovered art of francis bacon uh, so when when i was in the high school it was like around anyway when i was in the high school i was 16 maybe 17 uh, I was like exploring all possible, like uh, all uh, art history, uh, in order to find like new fascinating patterns or, and pictures. Uh, and I was studying like quite patiently and and hard, let's say, uh, to find something exciting. So. I didn't have internet back then, so the only places where, where you could find information about uh, old masters and artists were libraries. I, did, I had like access to maybe two libraries uh, in my small town and in my high school. In my high school there was quite a lot of albums of many old masters, so I knew them very well. But those were like old albums and usually like those were like classic painters which we all know like Velasquez, Rembrandt and so on. But there was and there was like a lot of Russian painters uh, and it was difficult to find albums with contemporary art. Um, so there was not too many like abstract artists and simply very contemporary artists so uh, there was another place where you could find uh, albums with art and it was um, uh, bookshops uh, and of course there was there was plenty of uh, new art then uh, there, there as well uh but again it was like few names which we all know very well uh but there was no francis bacon and in general there are some artists which are promoted uh, widely but there's uh, there's plenty of artists which are not very well represented in media and in press and uh in bookshops in general so there was no francis bacon there was no many of my f favorite painters like uh, max ernst um anyway i had friends which were studying uh, which were, were like uh, 
having parents which which were studying like arts uh, and they they had albums at home and i had friend which had albums of uh, album of francis bacon and it was like shocking for me and it was extremely extreme like discovery he was like the strong one a strong real master amazing painter so uh, just one second uh, so i first when i like back then i was like uh, already interested like in let's say biological arts and um uh i was looking for painters were, which were like exploring more abstract motifs uh so there was a few painters which fascinated me the most uh, and it was tadeusz brzozowski alfred lenica for example uh there was there was a few others of course i mean i love many painters in general i i love art in general but uh, back then uh, like let's say biological arts was like a good direction for me anyway like francis bacon and uh, it was a discovery and later i started exploring like him in general uh so <clears throat> i've i've read some interviews with him like uh with david this interview his famous interviews uh, uh with uh, which david silver um silverman uh sylvester sorry david sylvester uh, made and it was like uh new fresh approach for me because most uh, of um painters and artists were like more romantic let's say in nature and bacon was a realist and uh he was completely disillusioned disillusioned about like human nature so it was fresh for me uh and like brutal in a way and i loved that because uh whatever it brings you down to reality is powerful uh so he 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 was a strong influence for me uh from like me uh, my early uh, teenage years uh so that's why i'm so excited to see um, so many of his paintings today uh there was this um, retrospective uh, exhibition in Paris quite recently, a few years ago, like maybe three or something like that, three or two, whatever. Uh, I couldn't be, be there. So now is another opportunity to see this exhibition and I couldn't miss that one. Uh, because... Uh, it, like it will be difficult to to see more of these paintings uh, again uh it's still quite difficult to find uh, francis bacon uh Fra francis bacon's albums uh i don't know why is that it's for me some culture camp like <laughs> uh, But anyway, I will not go into details. Why is that? Like, I don't know. Uh, so now is this opportunity, and uh, I saw a few of his paintings, uh, like in real life, uh, and it was like even more powerful experience than than like watching albums uh so i'm very like excited for today 
what I wanted to say more. Anyway, tickets are very expensive in the Royal Academy and it's not cool. Uh, I paid 22 pounds for, for this one. Uh, so, uh, anyway, there is no other option uh, at this moment. So, see you later. Uh, yep, I will show some London as well uh, in a mil meanwhile. And maybe we'll see Francis Bacon in person there on this exhibition. Ah, oh no, he's dead. He's very dead. So we are already here, but first things first. Hi guys, <clears throat> and few hours later, uh, in my studio, uh, after seeing this uh, amazing, awesome exhibition at Royal Academy of Francis Bacon, Men and Beast, 
I haven't seen so many uh, paintings of bacon once uh, before. Uh, it was like worth of this money, uh, I must say. And I have so so many like uh, reflections and thoughts about uh, bacon mm, that I never uh, that I don't know if I'll be able to like um, say everything about it it would be probably better to write something about it but anyway like i would try and like uh for the first time i i just uh started thinking about bacon in a in a quite different way uh i just realized that he's not so pessimistic as you might think <laughs> I mean, he probably haven't been uh, like very pessimistic. Like he was realist. So, like let's let's uh, <laughs> let's try to to make some order of this this speech. Let's say. Uh, so, like, what Bacon in general is capturing in his, in his pictures for me, uh, it's like. It's like constatation, like uh, he's like uh, telling about facts. <laughs> so we are meat. We we are going to die, and all these pictures of of his they are showing like shredded, decaying flashes, corpses of uh, of some. You don't know even what it is like humans or animals whatever so those are facts uh, those are like uh, mortal machines uh, we are mortal machines oh it's so bad it's so pessimistic yeah okay all of that is true uh, we've got as well something like alienation isolation let's say those are like entities uh, which are in some closed spaces let's say and that's that's one side of this story uh, for me uh, but i started seeing it in a <laughs> in a like in a different way because for me what is going on here uh, is that it's not without meaning that uh, these entities are in in some spaces and there are some lines which like for me represent something abstract like ideas for example whatever for example mathematics or uh, let's let's call it ideas or imagination so and we can we can call it as well phenotype so here we've got this biological machines and we can call them like uh, machines which are taking care of our genes so those are genes but around them there is a phenotype which is uh, manifesting uh, around us and on the one side those are dying machines and decaying machines uh, this is only meat but at the same time we've got this whole space and uh, what's what is around us and it's protecting us <laughs> and it's like so let's say this um, space of culture let's say uh, this space of memory uh, this shared space of language uh, it's something which is working against all that uh, decay all that mortality uh, 
and at the same time it's protecting information which is like uh, the most essential and important uh, when it comes to human mind so okay we can say Francis Bacon is dead but still these paintings are so fresh and like uh, capturing something universal about humans um, and they are <laughs> not only capturing something which we, we can share with Bacon uh, but it's capturing like imagination of Francis Bacon all all of these paintings for me those are like representations which were like very similar to what he has in his mind as we know he was destroying many of his artworks so if he saves some of them they were like quite accurate accurate so he is dead but his imagination is in our imagination it's our in our the, the this representations of his his representations becoming our representations and these memes <laughs> are surviving in our heads and it's optimistic because <laughs> for, let's forget about these genes but w what was the most important was his mind uh, and this mind is surviving and it's like this whole, like uh, folder for for this exhibition it's um it's hi history of his life and it's so this small book there is many copies of of <laughs> of this small small folder is in, in many pockets now people the, there were there were there was many many people and the, the, those were crowds uh, and history of his, of his life is now in many many pockets in many many homes uh, there is plenty of books about uh, Bacon which you can buy and there is plenty of albums you, which you can buy and there is so many paintings of, of his his paintings which are like amazing so i'm not like becoming like idealists uh, <laughs> saying that uh, because still in order to preserve information we have to have like uh sub substra substrates in which uh, this uh, uh information is mm, represented and uh, which is like uh, not only uh, preserved but uh, in order to make use of that information it should be like some computer of some sort and probably let's say uh, if we can say uh, if we would say about meaning it should be like self-aware uh, sort of thing system or whatever so we need this flashes uh, we need still we need biology and, and this biological machines to uh to like preserve this uh, this information and these ideas let's say uh but <laughs> optimistic thing is it's still going like so the information is preserved very well this these paintings are kept well, very well okay but it's one part like so i started seeing it's like optimistic and uh optimistic as well because we can s we can see these paintings not only as a brutal depiction of decay but we can think about uh, this like about caricatures so we think that we are so ideal and we are so narcissistic but this this small funny thing about us is that we are mortal so it's <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe you shouldn't see it like uh, 
like a tragedy, but more of a, like a comedy. Of course, like it can be like psychopathic point of view. Uh, I'm not like um, saying that we should turn off emotions. Uh, but maybe we should like um, keep going and try to see it in that way. Anyway, you can like because uh, many of uh, paintings of Bacon are quite naive uh, in form, uh, so um, maybe he allows this interpretation a, a little bit and like even painting is like uh, let's say a language of, of a child more so uh, so uh, maybe we can think about it uh, as, a, as a funny thing as well but anyway there is one uh, uh, brutal aspect of that and it's uh, of of his um, arts in general. Uh, that in order to save this information, we have to uh, like capture some someone's like um, we have to uh, create situation where people are focused and want to remember uh, something. So in order to survive as an artist. He he had to like create this very brutal depiction, which is we to which we are the most like um, tuned as a species to, because we are surviving machines, we are tuned to uh, perceive like uh, blood or or decaying corpses as a danger and something which like create this alert state of mind so he had to become a brutal to become visible and to survive so we've got still this uh savanna like jungle like attitude but in the space of information let's say so it's <laughs> like next step uh that's this our aggression and brutality let's say which we can still have because of like nature of of animals but it's like slightly different kind of brutality which is only in representation of course bacon as a, as a person was probably quite brutal as well and it's not cool <laughs> um, but yeah but for me like what uh, what i've learned like how to we can interpret bacon is that this phenotype is a uh is a quite optimistic uh thing in these pictures and uh, of course we can think about this uh as well as a kind of religion uh this phenotype but it's still keep going like we are still building this machines of sur sur survival like uh, we are still protecting ourselves better and better and uh, so uh, it's a quite of like transhumanism it's like contemporary religion let's say but I started seeing it like like that that we can because of the the spaces and surround surrounding uh we can think about it like like simply phenotypes which are protecting ourselves so uh and what's funny about it it's like you can be existentialist and you can be pessimist but still your information about you will be preserved so this is a paradox like you are mortal but not in a way uh, because information about you is staying whatever it's like you can say karma of some kind 
uh, whatever you are saying you are doing people are re will remember that uh, whatever you did like you you leave some traces uh, uh, some marks of of that uh, so quite a big moment for me because like I started uh, seeing in, in a different way um, and like when it comes to, to like how this these pictures looks like alive it's such a amazing experience because these paintings are so big uh, and it's very immersive experience because uh, these uh, figures on, on these paintings are like precisely the size of a human being like uh, almost uh, let's say so uh, and this this um, fields of color they are very intense and and it's like amazing to see how how like good painter uh how how good he was like really gr great pan painter because like these colors are very clear vivid um and they are still like working like like they would they, they, they would be this painter like it, it will be mm, like put it on canvas like yesterday uh, so very powerful uh, paintings uh, but yeah for and, <laughs> and like I, I use these words alienation and like I am leftist let's say uh, but uh, <laughs> even if you like don't like this machine of capitalism let's say uh, which is creating this feeling of isolation and alienation let's say because you have to work to survive and you have to struggle uh, we can think about like cities or, or the system as a huge machine which is which have to like keep you alive to survive itself uh, so it's tragic but at the same time it's like we would be building like some huge machine and I would I, it's a metaphor but we are building for example cities uh, like these spaces here uh, which are like protecting us and even if there are it's like um, alienation in the sense that it's not built it's for you precisely it's built it for us but it's serving you as it would be built it for you because like you can use all these goods which we created uh, so yes there is this uh, alienation but and, and it's a brutal like mechanism and I still like think that this, 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 this redistribution of, of wealth should be happening uh, and there is huge inequality which is like um, uh, on justice uh, but still uh, <laughs> even if I, I think about this brutal uh, machine like that this machine keeps us like quite comfy and if, of course many like critics leftist critics are, are saying that it's delusion of some kind that uh, this com comfort is a delusion and illusion and that's that's true to some uh, some like extent uh, but we've got this like real uh, like let's say uh, helpful tools uh, like medicine for example and and computers whatever even if they all of that have some some uh, bad ends let's say the consequences uh, it's a different topic uh, different thing uh, to discuss but when it comes to bacon 
I started seeing it in a more uh, like abstract way, let's say. Uh, because if you are considering it on this uh, uh, as he was considering like life only here and now and facts about like uh, near future yes it's brutal and it's tragic yes it's our future it's true uh, but when you will allow like future uh, and and these ideas and uh, what is possible uh, conceptually it's becoming like more optimistic and it's like we are funny little creatures uh, like oh and i had this uh, like another metaphor let's say this human being is like co co build it up like from some bacteria which which are like living in inside of this human being and <laughs> uh, they are serving us as well so we can survive and the same is like this human and in the same way this human being in, is inside of a machine uh, which is like for example city or whatever like something bigger uh, so we are like like a bacteria which is uh, living inside of us so we, we are in the city like bacteria which are living inside of us it's very abstract maybe uh, maybe someone understands what, what I'm trying to say uh, but yes uh, when when I think about future I'm optimi optimistic because we can like create something very complex which is uh, serving uh, serving us in a very complex way like artificial intelligence for example and it's protecting us in a uh, amazing way it's like whole internet is like serving us all the time in uh, many many ways which we even didn't haven't like thought about uh, before like uh, whatever we we are creating apps which are doing many many things unimaginable sometimes uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah we are mortal uh, but in this broader picture in this wider context uh, it can be more funny I think uh, than tragic yeah so Francis Bacon, uh, Men and Beast. Um, uh, in the Royal Academy, of London. <laughs> I had uh, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I I filmed and I saw I will show it. I I will show it. Um, in this video, I, I saw some other uh, exhibition today, uh, and it was like very polite um, figurative painting, and I don't get it. I like I don't get politeness in general uh, because, like, in order to. To make some progress in thinking let's say and in aesthetics you have to be more like um, I think um, not uh, critical let's say uh, when it comes to what is what is here and now uh, but it was good uh, good uh, art anyway it was well made let's say and there was some interesting like um elements in in, in it like on all faces there were some sticking sticking elements and which which are sticking out from the can it was canvases yeah and these canvases were very like white and it's it's unusual because usually like uh thickness of of canvas is invisible but uh thickness of of this canvases were 
so huge that it was like uh, another aesthetical element. Uh, so it's it become like um, uh, so so this this painting was like more. Uh, oh, I would say that it was more aesthetical the, than meaningful. Uh, but if if it was aesthetical, it was aesthetical in a nice way. Uh, so something like fashion. There is no no of deep meaning. Um, but it's something um uh, something sometimes beautiful as well. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so it, it it was very nice day. <laughs> I I even like. I'm looking a very like special way today. It's very unusual for me, and uh, as I'm wearing this kind of stuff, and it's so crazy, crazy. Okay, see you next time. <laughs>